Well, good morning. God bless you all. This is God Talk. I'm Pastor Dan. And uh, I'm hoping that you get this somewhere in the Christmas season. But if not, uh, Christmas will come to you today. The uh, question for you today, who would you rather have, Santa Claus or Jesus? If I had both Santa Claus and Jesus come to your house, and there's one tree of all the best stuff you've ever heard Santa Claus could ever give, and under the other tree are all the best things that Jesus could give. When you get up in the morning, which, which one would you rather have? Assuming both are true, Santa Claus or Jesus. I was with one of my former church members a while ago, last year, and he had a brand new Mercedes convertible. Just a two-seat car. Unbelievable. Let me sit in it. As soon as you get in, it starts to massage you. <laughs> heated everything, set to your own temperature the way you would like. Seats are heated. You push buttons, this open. You push a button, it all opens up. Every song you've ever heard is in the system so fast. I thought, boy, if I had one of these, I could get every kid baptized. You want to get, you want to ride in my car? Okay, get baptized. You can have a ride in my car. Unbelievable how cool that car was. What else would be on my list? Lakers season tickets. Dodger season tickets. At Disneyland Pass, I can have every day, no blackout dates. I can go anytime. Free golf, Pebble Beach, St. Andrews. I can go around the world, free golf. Three months cruise. Talk to a doctor friend of mine. He's going to go on a ship three months, give a few pills out. He's on a boat for three months, so cruising the world. So how do I get something like that? I said, do I need a pastor <laughs> on the boat? $10,000 gift card for the Apple stores. You can get every song that you want. What would you like? Free first class tickets on any airplane, anywhere, for the rest of your life. What do you want, that or you want Jesus? Certain conference president wrote an article a while ago, I'm not going to say anybody you know right now, and he listed some books that every Adventist should not read. Well, quite a few of us had those books. <laughs> he thought that there was something that uh, these two or three preachers were saying that was not right. But one of the books was uh, where I got the idea for this, Bill Hybels, was talking to a group of fifth graders in a class in Chicago. After he gave his little spiel, then he uh, had them to raise their hand if you want to give your life to Jesus. One kid did not. He said, how come you don't want to give your life to Jesus? You haven't told us what he's like yet. So he quotes one verse, John 10, verse 10. Thieves come to steal and destroy and take life. I came to give you life and life more abundantly. I preached it all over the world. Satan has been telling lies about God for thousands of years. Don't get too close to God. He'll take life away from you. He'll cheat you out of life. Jesus has to come down and say, no, no, no. no. <laughs> he takes life away from you. My Father came to give you life and life more abundantly. He said, thieves come to your house. And they back up a truck and they take the best stuff. They take your computer, take your silverware out. We had our silverware out for Thanksgiving. We've had computers taken. Came home one Saturday night. They probably know that I'm gone on Sabbath and two computers gone. Below the deductible, so you just have to buy new. It's difficult. But he says, God says, I'm not a thief. I don't back up a truck and take stuff out. 
I'm not trying to take life away from you. I'm not the one who gives cancer and diabetes and war and, and divorce and all, all the other sufferings that are around the world. I came to give you life. And he made a list. I'm going to read the list to you. Purpose, fulfillment, meaning, love, peace, confidence, security, freedom. I call them the magic eight. It's a good list. And Jesus comes into the house and, and puts gifts in. Doesn't take stuff out. Are those eight better than anything else? Are those better than the free golf around the world? The free gift, the free cruise? How do you weigh peace, fulfillment, love, security, freedom versus things and pleasure and travel and stuff in your house? Which would you rather have? We put a list together of all the young adults in my church. We had like 250 that we had met somewhere, knew somewhere, had connection to. We had a big party for them. We're hiring a young adult pastor. And we said, how's this young pastor going to do to try to get all these young people together? I studied with them. We had a banquet. A hundred people came. How do we make God look so good? I will say to kids, you know, okay, 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 here's the message and have Bible studies. And then I say, are you ready? And they'll say, I'm not ready. I said, what are you waiting for? They're afraid. Now you're going to have to go to church every week. You're going to have to follow these rules. You can't eat what you want. You can't wear what you want. Listen to what you want. Watch what you want. Do what you want. They're afraid. They're afraid that God is going to limit your freedom. God is going to somehow take life away. I know a friend of mine, <laughs> when he became a Christian, he went to the conference office and asked for his books. What do you mean your books? He said, the only Adventist he knew was a call porter. He thought that's what you did when you became an Adventist. You sold books. <laughs> he eventually did sell books. But uh, he was my publishing leader. But he's not in the church today. It wasn't worth it. What's on your Christmas list? Between Jesus and Santa Claus. What's on your list? What would you really like to have? Famous song by Amy Grant, The Grown-Up Christmas List. Not just stuff and toys and the latest gadgets from Cyber Monday, which is today as I tape this. No more wars breaking out. No more lives torn apart. Wars would never start. The time would heal all hearts. Everyone would have a friend. The right would always win and the love would never end. The grown-up Christmas list. Which would you rather have? And so I decided to take on this challenge for the next few minutes to see if somehow I could describe a life with Jesus that would be so compelling and so irresistible that it would be more drawing to you than the Santa Claus list. That if Santa Claus was real and offered you the best, you would still choose Jesus. Better than the lazy Laker season tickets. Better than Hawaii. Better than having all the movies and music in the world. Better than a three-month cruise. It's Jesus. So I'm going to start with purpose, fulfillment, and meaning. we put those three together of our magic eight. My mother came over to our house as she was going through all her things and downsizing to move into the villa here in Loma Linda. And she had a folder of the mementos of our family. There was the letter from the General Conference headquarters asking my parents, 28 years old, to go be missionaries in Thailand. Didn't know where Thailand was. They'd heard of Siam, but didn't know Thailand or where it was. Little country next to Burma. <laughs> They didn't have to do that. They could have stayed home. Take three little boys who are four, two, and five months old, get on a boat for six weeks, go to Thailand, 
Live in this rental house that had no cupboards. We took baths out by a well, cold water, no hot water for many years. Snakes everywhere. Adventure of our lifetime. I was showing this to my sons. And my sons just said, it changed your life, didn't it? That choice. Purpose, meaning, and fulfillment, to be missionaries in Thailand. I preached about Mary in my time. This would be last week. And Mary is a young girl, 17, 18 years old, and an angel comes and says, I'm going to make you the mother of God. You are going to give birth to a son, and his kingdom will never end. The stone from Daniel chapter 2. Her plans were to be a regular young woman who got married and had babies the normal way and live her life and then die in her little village. It's normal. That's her script. Angel comes and says, no, I'm going to take you. And she gets to be the mother of God and sings the Magnificat. Everybody knows her name. Purpose, meaning, and fulfillment. Angel comes to everybody. If you'll take it. After four years of last year, we needed a new chaplain, found a young man finishing the seminary named Sam Lenore. I could tell you a long story how we got him. Miracle story. Had to, had to say no to him twice. Finally, it worked out. Phenomenal fork in the road. 21 years as a chaplain of La Sierra University, one of the greatest speakers, pastors, collegiate chaplains ever. He's gone into healthcare ministry right now. Just a great, great, great human being. Lives close to our house. I needed uh, someone to help talk my nephew coming from Maine to come to La Sierra University and go into theology and become a pastor, Bible teacher, whatever. Smart right kid. And I called Pastor Sam up and I said, could, could you come and just talk to this kid for 10 minutes? Sure, Pastor Dan. Not everyone gets this. But we have 21 years. Came over to our house, came out to my study, talked to this kid after an hour. Describing last year and who we are and what it was all about. It's okay. I said, where do I get this? This blessing in my life to get to do ministry and do great things around the world together for God. Purpose, meaning, and fulfillment. I teach a class for La Sierra University. There's business ethics now. It's a class called Values. Sometimes I would have half the class be from China, not one belief at all. No God, nothing. And the challenge is to make my business ethics so irresistible and so logical and make sense that they would say, I want that. And God would help me, and by the end, they would give their papers, and they, they would hit the table, and this is wrong. We have to stop this. You know, why? Who says so? You're beginning to have a God. You're beginning to have morality and standards. One time we had eight girls. I said, I'm going to take you out to dinner. I took a whole eight. They all dressed up. We had this Chinese dinner together. <laughs> They're shy, but we began to talk. I asked, what question do you have? And they began to ask some questions about God, which is what I wanted. And one girl, she said, but where, where did God come from? <laughs> But she admitted she was beginning to believe in God, beginning to pray to God. That's better than what Santa Claus has. I go overseas and preach overseas. If you know me at all, you know that's what I do. We're in the virus right now, I can't go. But as soon as the virus is over, I've got six, seven series all lined up for next year. We were doing a series in a place called Lagospe, Philippines. Staying in a little guest room, typhoons and craziness, preaching every day. 
out in the villages trying to get people to come and make decisions. Finally, when it was all done, after all the typhoons and everything, we had 350 maybe in a swimming pool. Some of the kids were really small, you know. They can be 10, 12, 13 years old and still pretty small. You had to hold them in the top pool because they couldn't go all the way to the bottom. So I'm lined up, 13 pastors were baptizing these people. A couple hours later, some more came. We had to go back to the water, get back in the pool and baptize some more. <laughs> Great story. But I was burdened for these kids that we baptized. And I said to the mission leaders, we need to find some money and get these kids into an Adventist school. Some of these are their only person in their family. And do you expect them to somehow find the Adventist church next week and be part of a youth group? That the youth group might be under a tree somewhere? I mean, difficult. I said, we got to get them into our school. The best I could do, we found money for 10 scholarships. A year later, I'm doing week of prayer at another place. They wanted me to fly down and do the graduation for Sunday morning. So got up five in the morning, flew down there, got there eight o'clock, say. They took me to breakfast in the cafeteria. I've been there many, many times. We finished this great breakfast, and I got to go change. Graduation is coming, 9, 30, 10. Put my robe on. I'm the last one. Girl comes running out behind me. Pastor Dan, Pastor Dan. Yes. You remember me? <laughs> no, sorry. You baptized me in the gospel last year. I said, I was the one. Many pastors. No, you were the one, Pastor Dan. <laughs> So what do I say? I said, no regrets. No regrets, Pastor Dan. I'm the only one in my family who's an Adventist. And you got one of those scholarships, and I got one of them. And I'm here going to college. I love it here. Going to be whatever. I forget. Purpose, meaning, and fulfillment. And Jesus says, I am not a thief. Thieves back up a truck and take your best up, but Jesus backs up a truck and puts gifts around and you have purpose and meaning and fulfillment. You know who you are called to be and you get to live your life in your sweet spot because you know God called you for that. I'll take that over all the Disneyland Pass and the three-month cruise. Purpose, meaning, and fulfillment. I watched a show called CNN Heroes. Doctors and OBGY, I mean, uh, uh, OBGYN, sorry. And she's over there in Nigeria and she's bringing a baby into the world. And they're in the dark and people are holding flashlights. Baby dies. She can't stand it. She finds out the numbers are terrible, like 40, 50% of the babies are born that die because they're just not good. Situations, there's no light, or half of the time the baby comes during the night. That's what the statistics are. And somewhere there's a mistake made. Her husband's kind of an engineer, so they go back home, they come up with a little solar light. They had these little kits, about $1,500, where there's, you can get solar power, the panel, generate two big bright lights, and a bunch of other stuff is all included in it. And they had raised the money for 400 Saved thousands of babies' lives. CNN heroes. Meaning, purpose, and fulfillment. This guy, Chad, for He's in Mississippi River. He just can't stand it. He sees what people are dumping into the Mississippi River. He just can't bear it. And he begins to, to take a boat and a raft up and down. And in 15 years... Thousands and thousands of tires and refrigerators and stoves and dishwashers are just unbelievable trying to restore this great river. Finding purpose and meaning, fulfillment. My Uncle Mora used to have a parable about going to Las Vegas and meeting a man who would offer you a million dollars, you can do whatever you want for a year. You could drink and party, whatever. But after a year, you have to come back and you will die. It's from this tree. Or you could follow Jesus. Meaning, purpose, and fulfillment. 
I talked to a girl the other day. She'd gone to Adventist schools, church schools all her life. For the first time in her life, she's at a driver's ed class. And no one else that she knows. Scared to death. And they divide up into partners. She doesn't know anybody. These aren't Christian church people. And she sees one boy with a T-shirt that says, Jesus saves. And she says, I want the Jesus guy. <laughs> Isn't that what we want? I want the Jesus guy. I want to do my life with Jesus. I choose Jesus. Purpose, meaning, and fulfillment. Now four more. Love, peace, confidence, and security. I spent 18 years in my life scared to death. Your name would come up at the wrong time. Or you'd make a mistake and you're off the list. You look at that Playboy magazine when you're 12, 13 years old, you're off the list. You're out. The guy was living with the girl. She called him up and she had just won the lottery. Good news, I won the lottery. Pack up. He said, we're going to go. He says, you I get winter clothes or summer clothes? She says, I don't care. Just be out of the house by the time I get back. He's out. That's what I grew up with. I was out. I know a pastor who won the lottery. And as soon as they found out that he had won the lottery, he was out. We can't have that. But the angels came when Jesus was born and they said, Today a Savior has been born to you. That's who Jesus was. They wanted a king. They didn't want a Savior. They wanted a king, someone who would free them from the Romans. But the angels said, We have a Savior for you. Peace, security, love. Confidence is a savior. He never changes. We're going to give you a savior. I was in a tubing in Thailand one time. We were little kids. Well, all the missionaries, we drove a couple hours north from Bangkok, and we got to go in this inner tube thing. Oh, it was so much fun. You'd get out, and you would take your inner tube and wheel it up to the top and get in and go down again, over and over again all day. When you got down to the end, you kind of had to paddle pretty hard to get over to the shore. So we all knew at a certain point you had to paddle. Well, my brother missed it one time. He ended up in the bulrushes in the middle. Some guy had to go in and save him. I missed it one time. And here I go sailing by. I didn't know if anyone even saw me. I'm heading out to the ocean to Thailand. <laughs> so I finally got over to the side, and I grabbed some of those brushes, but when I grabbed them, I lost the inner tubes, and now I've got nothing. I'm holding on to these, and here's a bank several feet up. And I could not get out of that rushing river and up that bank. And finally, I yelled and screamed, and finally, someone help me. Chad Dameron, who just passed away, is a great missionary, somehow heard me crying and came over and fished me out of there. I needed a savior. And that's what Jesus is. He's a Savior. He's a Savior today. He never changes. He doesn't become something else. They talk about the strange act. That they think Jesus becomes something else. No, He is a Savior. And if He is a Savior, God is a Savior. They're together. Whatever they do, He's a Savior. You need a Savior? He's a Savior. Love, peace, confidence, security. That's what He does. 1 Corinthians 13, love never ends. Love never gives up. Love is always there. John 14, let not your heart be troubled. I'm preparing a place for you, but if I prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. He's a Savior. And he offers us love, peace, security, and confidence. I took my boy to see the Vietnam War wall memorial. That's my war. It's my time. 1973, 72, 73, I was 19, 20 years old, right in the core of the draft. My number was 58 out of 365. I'm going to go. I hated. I didn't no desire to go. I was scared to death. Did not want to kill anybody. Didn't want to die. Didn't want to be a medic. Didn't know how to do that. Scared. Didn't get to go. Didn't have to go. Got to defirm it. But when I got to the wall, I said to the boys, go look for my name under 73. Dad, these are people who died. You're alive. Can't be you, Dad. And I said, go check. Maybe I'm there. No, it's ridiculous. And that's what we have to feel 
that we're not dead, we're alive. We know, don't have to go check on the wall ever again. My boys don't have to check. I don't have to check to see. I don't have to see, am I saved or not? Am I good enough? Am I off the list? I am saved. I am going to heaven. I have a place in heaven with my name on it. Jesus has put me on the list. Yes, you can walk away, but as long as you have Jesus, you're on the list. Peace, love, confidence, security. And Jesus backs up the truck, and he puts the gifts all around. Fulfillment, meaning, purpose, love, security. That's what he does. What's your picture of God? Is your picture of God the God who is waiting and watching to try to catch you? He's a thief. He's got a lot of rules that you really don't want to follow, and you got to go to church, and you got to give your money. you got to give God a Sabbath. You can't do what you want, can't wear what you want. Or is your picture of God the anti-thief who backs up a truck and puts gifts everywhere? Who would you rather have, Santa Claus or Jesus? There was a little girl named Grace, came to a little store Christmas Eve, rang the bell, let her, let her in. What would you like? I said, I want to get something from my sister. She sees a little blue necklace. She says, how much is that? He said, how much do you have? She pours out her little purse, had a few little coins. She said, that's, the, that's exactly the price. That's exactly it. She says, I want to do this for my sister. Our mother died. My big sister takes care of me. I want to do something. She works so hard to take care of me. I want to give her something. He wrapped it up nice. She went home. Half an hour later, Dora rings up Gail. Here's a beautiful young lady. He said, the little girl come. Yes. What was her name? Grace. Did she buy this? Yes. How much money did she give you? I'm sure this cost more than that. And the store owner, who was 30 years old, whose fiance had just died, said, it was just enough. It was just enough. And he said, could I walk you home? It was enough. Is Jesus enough for you? May Santa Claus give you some nice things this year. But could Jesus just be enough? The magic eight. Peace, love, confidence, security, meaning, purpose, fulfillment. It's enough to know that you're living your life with him. He will give you meaning and purpose and make your life count. This is God talk.